That's affirmative, Lieutenant. We're in position. Perfect. Nobody moves until I give this signal, is that clear? We nail him as soon as he sets foot outside. Right, Lieutenant. Lucky that patrol spotted his car. What's he doing in there? Beats me. You're the profiler, right? I thought you were supposed to be right inside the killer's head. Well, that's just it. What I know of Ethan Mars doesn't match the killer's psychological profile. I know what the jury's gonna choose between your theories and concrete proof. What the fuck is that girl doing there? Mars comes out now, she's gonna be in trouble. What do we do, Lieutenant? Wanna get her out? No, stand down. The police. They staked out the building where Ethan is. Going inside. Maybe she lives there. Well, it's just as well. We don't want anyone hanging around if Mars comes out. Ethan, what happened? The police, they're out there. I think they're here to arrest you. We've got to find another way out. Shit. What's he up to in there? Wait for a go on my word. On my go. Stay here, Jaden. Out of the question. I'm coming with you. Two men at the door hold your positions. It's a go. We've got the it's cops on our ass. No way out. Downstairs. They're in the alley. Follow them. The subway.
who have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Ethan Mars, father of the kidnapped victim Sean Mars, is on the run and should be considered armed and dangerous. A police manhunt is now underway, and they hope that they will soon be able to announce the apprehension of this dangerous lunatic. I brought some food. I didn't know what you like, so I brought some of everything. I, I hope that's okay. You followed me. I wanted to know. You're all over the news reports, Ethan. Every cop in the country will be hunting you. They say you're the origami killer. Is it true? Are you the killer, Ethan? I... I sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards is the bodies. The bodies in the water. Why are you hurt, Ethan? Why were you in that apartment? I think my other self is testing, testing my love for Sean. He wants to know if I'd love my son enough to save him. That means there's some part of me that knows where Sean is. But the only way to find him is to go through these trials. Why can't you tell that to the police? And tell them what? That I'm a schizophrenic who drowns his victims and has kidnapped his own son? They'd never let me go, and I have to stay free to save Sean. I have no choice. I'm his only chance. When Sean is out of danger, I'll turn myself in, but not until then. You can't keep going like this. You're destroying yourself, Ethan. Finding Sean is the only thing that matters. There has to be another way. You don't understand. Time is running out. Sean will be dead in a few hours. I have no choice! Please, Madison. Leave. Forget everything that's happened. There is nothing more you can do for me. If you want to help me, leave. Leave me to do this on my own.
I'll find you, Sean. I swear I'll find you. I don't have much time. I've got to find my son before it's too late. Your vodka, sir. Thanks. You look preoccupied, if you don't mind my saying so. Problems with the investigation? Blake is convinced that Mars is the killer. Not you. I thought there was some evidence to that effect. That's true. But it just doesn't make sense. His psychological profile doesn't fit. Neither does the geolocalization. I can't see this father drowning eight victims before kidnapping his own kid. Mars is not the origami killer. I'd stake my life on it. Then who is? I haven't the faintest fucking idea. Maybe you should review the evidence in your possession. That's just what I was thinking of doing. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm trying to keep a handle on it, but that's difficult. It gets more and more difficult. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. The video recording from near the park on the afternoon Sean Mars disappeared. I doubt there's anything on it, but you never know. A Chevrolet model corresponding to the tire prints passed at 1602 heading for the park, went in the opposite direction at 1637. That could fit the time that Sean Mars disappeared. Could it be the killer's car?
Ah, pity we can't see the driver's face. The car was stolen. Let's see, a certain Jackson Neville was suspected of stealing it, but the charges were dropped. Not enough evidence. Jackson Neville, a.k.a. Mad Jack, involved in several cases of buying and selling stolen vehicles. Considered to be very dangerous. This guy might have provided the killer with a car. It's a pretty slim lead, but it's all I have right now. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in the water. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. Shit, it's... it's coming. Tryptocaine. The tube is on the bedside table. All I need is to take some, and the pain will go away. I should resist. This is gonna kill me. I know I can resist, I just need to stay in control and, and do something until it goes away. What was that meeting with Charles Kramer at the golf club really about? Why is he so worried about me investigating his son? Manfred! Manfred! Anybody home? I was crazy to let her come with me. I was trying to help out, but she just gets in the way. I'll have to talk to her later. Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? S Scott? This is Scott! Oh, yes, of course! Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh. About ten years, I guess. Oh. At my age, time means nothing anymore. I... I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. How about you? Are you still with the police? Oh. No, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a... she's a friend. Hello. Oh, hello, young lady. Oh, this, this calls for a celebration. I've just a thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I, I saw a, a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. Nice to see Manfred again. Just like Do old times. Do an old man a favor, would you, Scott? Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Hello? Yeah, this is Manfred's. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Oh, 
well. To old friends. It's beautiful. It's a Stradelli. Crafted in Venice in the 18th century. Mm. It's one of my favorite pieces. Tell me, Scott. What brings you back after all these years? I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. Oh. Well, let's have a look. Now, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter, oh, sure, please? I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. See what this envelope has to say for itself. Hmm. A royal five. Hmm. Yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Hmm. Produced between 1907 and 1924. Yes. No doubt about it. It's a royal five. These typewriters, are they rare? No, no, they're fairly common. I'd say many folks have one gathering dust in an attic or in their cellar. You keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. At least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Well, yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, if you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes, and I'll be right back with the list. You think the killer's been here? If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. It's been a while since Manfred went into his office. I should take a look. Hello? Manfred! Hello? Your call is locked, sir. A police car will be there in a few minutes. I need to know who you are, sir. Sir? Hello? <sighs> oh my god! He's dead. Oh. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. The killer has already called the police. I think he wants us to be a scapegoat. We've got to get the hell out of here. What do you mean? We have nothing to do with his death. We were just here when it happened. Look, we're running out of time to find Sean Mars. The last thing we need is 24 hours in a police station explaining this whole thing. Well, so what do we do? Watch the front door. I'll get rid of our fingerprints from everything we touched since we came in. 
better work fast. The police are going to be here any minute. Someone comes in, we're gonna be in trouble. These are Manhattan's account books. He must have been looking for owners of royals when he was killed. Forget it. We gotta get out of here fast. You get all the prints? I got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from finding us. But come on, let's go. So, you claim the victim was killed while you were in his shop. Yes, he went to get something in his office. A few minutes later, I went in to see if he was okay. That's when I found him. You should have called the police immediately, Mr. Shelby. Would have saved us dragging your ass down here. Listen, we had nothing to do with his murder. We were only there by coincidence. I just wanted to spare myself a few hours declaring I didn't see anything to a police officer. P.I. or not, Mr. Shelby, don't leave town. If you end up next door to any more dead bodies, remember to call us. Okay? Well, well, Scott Shelby. Trouble again. Wrong time, wrong place. You know what it's like. Don't sweat. I'll take care. For old time's sake. Thanks, Carter. I owe you one. You on to anything at the moment? Well, I got some ideas. Nothing concrete. Well, if it goes beyond me. Idea stage. You tell me about it, will you, Scott? Sure. Where are we going? I'm taking you home. This is getting way too dangerous. No way. We are partners, remember? We had a deal. Listen, Lauren, I know you want to find the killer, but you're not helping me by putting yourself in danger. I'm not a child. I know what I have to do. I've got to find my son's killer. You're not going to stop me. You're going to be a good girl. You're going to go home and let me get on with my investigation.
crap, I have no choice. I guess I'm doing this to protect him. I can't just leave her like that. She'd do anything to find the guy who killed her son. It's all my fault. I should never have let her come with me. This girl's stubborn as a mule. She doesn't let up, with or without me. Lauren! Such an idiot. I better catch up with her. once again in my arms. He opens up, I shoot. I get the hell out of there and I don't look back. I didn't come all this way just to stop now. I've got to go through with it. For Sean. Yeah? What do you want? I said a thousand times that I don't want any junkies at my door. If you want to score, man, you gotta fucking cough. Hey! Take it easy, man. Huh? Keep cool. <laughs> what do you want? Go? Money? Tell me what you need. I'm sure we can make a deal, huh? Gosh, I'm gonna throw your brains out, you son of a bitch! You think you come into my house? I don't! You're gonna be shooting up in hell, motherfucker! Oh, man. Will you stop fucker moving? Whatever you want. You got dope? You got cash? You, you want some dope? Please. Please don't kill me, man. I got children. These are my girls, see? This one's Sarah. And a little one. That's Cindy. Please, man. I want to see them again. Please. Please don't shoot. <laughs> I'm a father too. But I have no choice.
Mad? It's Sam. I got your information. And the owner of the apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck-off surgeon. They used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did a few months in prison and was struck off the medical register. Interesting. Thanks for the information, Sam. I owe you one. Hey, Matt, be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. The owner of the apartment where Ethan cut off his finger lives here. It's not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. Gotta find some way to get him to talk about the Marble Street apartment. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get Vitropin. Without a prescription? Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. So, you're looking for Betropin, my dear? Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. No, thanks. Well, alcohol helps take the edge off the pills, don't you think? Anyway, we should drink a toast to our first deal. I haven't seen you around here before. Who told you about me? I met a guy at a party. He popped some betropin. Told me he got it from you. Can you get other types of medicine? Everything has a price, my dear. What about you? Do you have a price? Forget it. I'm not for sale. I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around Marble Street. You're not drinking? I am, um, um, I'm, I'm not really thirsty. I'll get your prescription. Won't be a moment. Wait here. Guy gives me the creeps. I better take a look around to see if I can find anything before he gets back. like he retired a bunch of medical supplies on his way out. There's enough sleeping pills here to knock out an army.
Feeling sick, got the sweat, hands are shaking. Hope this works out all right. 24 hours. I've got less than 24 hours if I want to find Sean Mars still alive. Goddamn rain, soaking wet. Blake wasn't in the office when I left. Don't think I'm gonna miss him. Tuba trip to Kane. Got it in my pocket. Hey, Cracker! What you doing in there? Nam and Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? Yeah. I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, or whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from me. Sorry, man. Don't ring a bell. I got a real bad memory of me. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. You trying to scare me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. Not much help, this so-called Mad Jack. He's either clean as a whistle, or else he's got something to hide. Blood. Now why is there blood here? The blood tracks lead to the acid bath. Get you out of sight and finish you off.
fucking around. Now you're gonna tell me about the man with the blue car. Go fuck yourself in the ass. I've no time to lose, Jack. I wanna know who that car belongs to. Well, what you want don't mean shit to me. I ain't no snitch. You better just lock me up now, boy. Uh, broke my fucking nose, pig! Next, I'm gonna blow a hole in your face. Spill all of it! You will scare me, Mr. CSI. You ain't got it in you. Do you like fireworks, Jack? Cause I bet them gas tanks are gonna blow up real nice. Shit, man, don't mess with the gasoline. Well, just say it was an accident. Or rather, I'll say it was an accident, cause you won't really be able to talk, will ya, Jack? You crazy motherfucker, you out of your mind, man! No, I don't know nothing about the guy. He wanted me to get rid of his dirty car, get him a new one with false plates. He paid cash, and I ain't the questioning kind. Said I was supposed to drop the word to a guy named Paco down at the Blue Lagoon when the car was done. Now that's all I know. Well, continue this discussion down at the station. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything... Shit, not now. Anything you say can and will be... Hey, <laughs> you look like you got a problem, man. Heads in the FBI now? God bless America. <clears throat> now I'm gonna give you a little help with your drug problem, Mr. Five-O. Permanently. Ha 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 ha!
So, you think the origami killer killed Manfred? That makes sense. Didn't want him spilling his guts to us. And you suspect Gordy Kramer, right? Oh, him or one of his men. Gordy has the time and the means, not to mention the fucked up attitude to go along with it. He's only a suspect, but he's a pretty guilty looking one. Are these your files on the case? Yeah, I've been working on them for a couple of years. Uh, I built up a mountain of paperwork. Magazines about origami? You think the killer could have subscribed to one of those? If he was even remotely interested in origami in the last 30 years, his name may be in there somewhere. Trouble is, there's over 500 names. It gets a squat. I'm starving. Do you have anything to eat? Well, I'm no chef, but I should be able to make some scrambled eggs if you like. Great. I'm soaking wet. I need to warm up a little. Is it okay if I take a shower? I'll be my guest. Go to my bedroom. It's the next door. Oh, I'll cook up the eggs while you're under the shower. should be ready by now. I took the liberty of borrowing your bathrobe. Looks better on you. Hey, that almost looks good enough to eat. What's that? The notebook I took from Manfred's place. According to this, about 30 clients bought spare parts for royal machines in the last 10 years. The killer may be one of them. Oh, you know, checking out the alibi of 30 clients one by one, that's a lot of legwork. Except that if we cross-check them with the list, 
The list of subscribers to Origami magazines. You still got that, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Lauren, wait. If the killer really used a royal typewriter, and if he subscribed to an origami magazine, his name should be on both lists. Well, Lauren, I, I mean, that's just an assumption, but yeah, I suppose. His name is here somewhere. Help me, we're gonna find him. The only guy whose name was on both lists died when he was 10. What are you gonna do now? Dig up his coffin, make sure he's dead? I know it doesn't make any sense. Unless the killer was only using his name. But why use the name of a kid who died 30 years ago? Well, that's what we came to find out. The name is John Shepard. It should be on a grave around here somewhere. You never give up, do you? Excuse me. I'm looking for the grave of a boy named John Shepard. Straight ahead, a little further on. Thanks. Hey, Lauren. I found it. These flowers are fresh. Looks like someone's still tending the grave. Origami figures. That's one hell of a coincidence. Oh, youngin. That one I knew well. You knew John Shepard? I've worked this graveyard nearly all my life. I remember what happened. It was in 77, October. spend a day outside. Well, this won't get beat. The rain never hurt nobody. Come on, let's go play. Bet you can't catch me!
Come on! Jeez, you're... Bitch can't do that! Chance, I can do it all right. Just watch. Seek! You go and come to 20 and try to find me, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen.
Those cries. That... John! My foot. My foot is stuck. Grab on. I'll come out with this. Kid never did find any help. And his brother drowned in a pipe full of rainwater. The boy that lived, what happened to him? Well, all as I know is he got separated from his parents. I, I think he got adopted. Well, looks like a storm's coming. I guess I better be getting home. Christ, what a horrible story. John Shepard drowned in the rain while holding his brother's hand. Do you think he... he could be the origami killer? Come on, let's get back in the car. What's the matter? That man over there. Yeah? It's Charles Kramer. Gordy's father? What's he doing here? He's putting flowers on John Shepard's grave. 